Oh, come on. I believe in you. We got it to work, gen or ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that was that was 13 minutes of chaos. Wow. Let me uh let me go ahead and mute my speakers here now that I got it to work. That was Wow, that was unnecessary for sure. Uh Okay, well, hello. <laughs> Welcome Welcome back. You know, it's been, what, like a month since the last one? It's been a while, for sure. I, I'm going to have to stand up and stretch because I was nuts. Just give me one second. That was unnecessarily stressful for no reason. Okay. So, yeah, welcome back to the stream. Uh, we are going to do the same thing that we've always done, and that's, you know, stumble upon an idea while doing some kind of <laughs> making it look like I know what I'm doing. Uh, the idea for today, I have about two narrowed down in my head, but who knows which way it could go because I'm so indecisive. And the idea is we have this cyberpunk world that I've been working on, right? I, you know, we have, we have this one, which is like the, the low town essentially the low income area which is under this kind of giant bridge train station ordeal uh you know that's that's cool oh hey what's up camillo camillo i you know i forgot to ask you <laughs> last time we talked how to say that but what's up man how's it going um so we got this low town right and we we have let's see if i can find it real quick we have the interior designs we've done this one and we have the one that started it all which was a personal piece so let me find that real quick uh, personal work uh, this one so then there's this one and that's like uh, the high income area right so it's a bit cleaner there's trees people are going to business like like little businessman here a business bot and then recently I did my own personal uh, idea just a rough sketch of what the entertainment district would look like right so it'd be loaded with advertisements there would be kind of like a Las Vegas vibe to it there'd just be you know lights everywhere but it wouldn't necessarily be blue or red heavy since it's entertainment it would just be a abundance of a crap load of stuff right so we have all of this world building, but, uh, good afternoon, M7, but, uh, there's no, there's no life to it. I mean, we have, you know, we have this kind of mood set, we have this, this whole setup of, uh, of this world living, you know, you can see people living around, people going to the bar, clubs, whatever, Mr. Mr. Bartender, just chilling. So, you know, we get this feeling that this place is alive, but if you're watching a TV show or a movie or something, you're not going to just watch people walking around, right? There's going to be scenes of action and adventure and, I don't know, people getting stabbed. Like, it's something, something interesting to look at, right? So, that's the idea today, is to come up with something interesting that is set in the same world that we've been building. Initially, this would have been coming out uh, about... A little over yeah a little over a week before cyberpunk 2077 came out but lo and behold cd project red decided to do what they do best <laughs> and uh you know I, i'm you know part of me being human it sucks that you have to wait a little longer you know like just just being a human being when you're waiting so long for something amazing and then somebody comes up to you and they're like hey just kidding we're gonna have to wait about three more weeks you know, it's a bit of a blow, but it's not its not something that's bad. It's just human nature to be like, dang it, I have to wait, right? But 
it is a good thing that they're pushing it back uh, because you don't want them to oh the wallpaper no my my uh <laughs> my wallpaper is actually a slideshow uh collection of oop, got my got my little folder sticking in here move that out of the way so it's actually a slideshow of different concept art from different games so like if i just do next background this is from uh the little dinosaur or the good dinosaur something like that it's a disney movie i didn't watch it but i just thought the art style was really good and if i do next i have to do it a couple times because i have you can see it in the webcam that this changed this is deus ex uh the mankind evolved i think concept art and then this was far cry 3 obviously I just like concept art as a background because it's, you know, it's what I do and that's what I, I like. But it's also a good reminder that stuff doesn't have to be refined for it to look good. Because, I mean, look at this. This is, this is like an eyesore of resolution, right? This is, this looks like somebody just <laughs> took a bunch of photos together and they made concept art. But as far as resolution goes, it's terrible, right? Like, this is just very blurry and pixelated and kind of just not something you would present to a photo contest but it works as concept art and that's kind of the whole point right so it's just a good it's just what i like um but yeah so anyway cyberpunk they pushed it back it sucks because you have to wait but it's a good thing because you know i rather than push it back and make something amazing than say like final fantasy 15 uh tetsuo nomura being the perfectionist that he is he was just like you know trying to <laughs> that took like 10 years and that game evolved into a whole bunch of different versions it started as like final fantasy versus 13 and then it started uh becoming its own title 15 but they took he took so long because he just kept changing it that they were losing money as a company right they were just paying the employees and the game never came out so they never made a profit off of it which sucks but that's just the way businesses work but the thing is is they went ahead and made him hurry up right so if you play 15, you can actually feel it in the game. Like if nobody even told you, uh, yeah, no, right? Like those seriously blurry and sharpened. But it was Far Cry, so uh, you know it was a triple A title, and it's just a good example. It doesn't have to be perfect. But yeah, so Final Fantasy 15, right? If you play the game, and nobody told you it was rushed, you can feel when it was rushed. You like you can feel. I think it's like chapter eight or nine. Because after 8 or 9, they, the game becomes super linear. It's an open world game the whole time. But then as soon as you get to chapter 8 or 9, you have to beat the game. Like, they, like it will not let you do anything else until you beat the game. And then there's parts in the story, which anybody that's played it knows what I'm talking about, where you're playing it and you're like, wow, okay, cool. The story's getting pretty good. The story's good. And then it's like, uh, oh, yeah. And then 10 years later, and then all of a sudden this other stuff happens. So you just, like, skip a 10-year block. And you're like, what the... What happened? You know, like, <laughs> what? What's going on? I'm so lost. But then, uh, but then, you know, the story is actually still fine. It still worked. But you can feel that it was rushed, right? The game would have been way better if they took the same amount of effort in the first half and put it in the second half. Tetsuya Nomura, I can guarantee, wanted to do that. But Square Enix was like, bro, you need to chill out. Uh, you're costing us a lot of money right now. So we just need this game to come out and make us some money, please. Like for love of God, right? So that's, that's pretty much why I'm okay with Cyberpunk pushing it, because if they were to release it and rush anything, then it's going to diminish the quality of the game by some margin, depending on what was rushed, and I'd just rather them not rush it, you know? I'm totally fine with waiting. We've waited since, what, 20... What was it, 2013? 2012? When they announced the freaking game? So, like, three weeks is fine. Like, who cares, right? It, it sucks, personally, because you're like, dang it, I have to wait three weeks. But in the long run... It's going to be okay. Plus, it's not like there's going to be a long lull of games not coming out. Because, my god, next week? Yeah, next week, man, it, it's it's the avalanche is coming, right? Because <laughs> Xbox, uh, Xbox Series X is coming out November 10th. And then the PS5 is coming out November 12th. And uh, I, I'm, you will not hear from me after November 12th for at least, like, 10 days. I'm gone. Like, I'm just going to go hide in a cave looking like Smeagol with a PlayStation 5. I already have it pre-ordered. I lucked out. It's it's a story on how I got it. Uh, and I'll get to that once we get somewhat started here. Uh, 
so let me let me get this collection of pictures that I was just perusing through real quick. Uh, map paint. I hate I hate collecting pictures on mobile and then saving it to Dropbox because there's a weird I don't know what to call it like a weird programming glitch where they will uh, they'll send it to Dropbox like twice so then you have like three copies of the same picture so right now I'm just going through and deleting all the duplicates real quick um, there's not too many but it happens and it's a thing but the uh uh, back to what <laughs> the point of the stream is I was going to do an action scene. I don't know what it would be. I was coming up with some different ideas of what it could be. One of them would be like a uh, chase scene where like maybe two cars are uh, chasing each other through the cyberpunk slums. So there would just be this living cyberpunk world around. But you get this action scene of these like seriously cool cyberpunk cars going nuts and flying through the world, right? I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure out something. Is it going to be good? I don't know. <laughs> but but we're going to try. Uh, so let's... Can you see those? Should be large. Yeah, those are easier for you to see. So let's stretch this out real quick. And... Yeah, that's good. I originally started with an idea of like a Japanese style club, so I had these koi fish thrown in there. But even though I don't need the pond one, get rid of that one. This fish tail would it be that would be guess be a fin, right? Not a tail. Uh, it's really swo like uh, it's swoopy is the only word I can think of. But that's that right there would be a really cool idea of like let's say there's a motorcycle chase scene. And on the motorcycle, they have some kind of... Because it's cyberpunk, you can do whatever you want. Just play around with it. So maybe they have some kind of, like... Like a veil. Like a like this fabric that's attached to the motorcycle. So as they're driving, it would flail out the back of the motorcycle and create this kind of swoopy motion to it. Which would be really cool. Is it practical? Not at all. I mean, you know, that's that would kill people because he's caused a bunch of accidents. But it would look cool visually, and that's that's what we live for. We live for the cool factor. Uh, so I had the idea of like a car chase, motorcycle chase, maybe um, maybe there was a this guy, like a, the main hero, right, running from the villains and stuff, and jumping off like building to building, you know, or maybe that I don't know if you've seen. Uh, Camillo, Camillo, so you take a whole reference according to the theme before starting sketching. Yeah, usually, usually, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll try to find just some general ideas based on the theme, right? Which, if you have certain clients, some of them do that for you. The clients will come up to you and they're like, hey, we have this idea that we want you to figure out. And we went ahead, they, sometimes they use Pinterest, because Pinterest lets you create, like, uh, board collections and stuff, which is fine. But I just personally despise the way Pinterest works. But you can, uh, they'll, they'll send you, like, a Pinterest link or maybe a Google Drive link. And all it is is they've collected a bunch of pictures that kind of tell you the general idea of what they're going for. And then you have a jumping off point, right? Just makes it easier, speeds up the process. When we're doing these live streams, there's a mix. Uh, it's a different it's a different set of technique because it's it's a mix of performance right because we're live right now i gotta entertain you people you know <laughs> so so i have to i have to not that's why it was super stressful 13 minutes of not starting because freaking restream decided to have a hemorrhage but uh got it to work so we're good there but this is a bit of a performance mixed with work right so not only am i working and designing and trying to come up with a cool idea for a scene and stuff but i also have to make sure that i do it quickly uh and already have my plan ahead of time which is not normally how i work but this is just a way to work with live streams because it helps you know you guys not be bored out of your mind when i'm just scrolling through pictures trying to find something right because you know finding these takes you know it takes a bit right it takes like 
at least an hour or so, depending on how lucky you are and just how deeply you look. But I went ahead and get them before the stream because that way you guys don't have to watch that crap. But in real life, usually I don't have like a, I don't have a week to look for stuff. A client will contact me or something and they're like, you know, here's a general idea. But if they don't give me anything, then I, I just start looking for it. And then as I'm working, I look for more, you know, this is more of just a way to speed up the process for you guys. And the idea is you search for a cool perspective. How can we make a sketch with perspective? Yeah, so I do search for a cool perspective, but it's not necessarily the focus. Uh, I've mentioned this in other streams. Sometimes the focus is actually one little piece of the picture that has nothing to do with the entire picture itself. Like, for example, uh, this... Let's see, let's... Uh, for example, something like this or this yeah something like this so this right here is just a picture of it looks like a bus driving by or some kind of train something like that but the point of it is i just like this blur here this one line blur and then these little reflections in the window are sick and what we can do is we can use those to kind of just just like delete the rest of the picture because nobody cares. We just want that little bit because that's a cool way to uh, in, in, not improvise. What impression? Uh, wow, I, I, I'm having a, I, I'm having a senior moment. I can't think, but it's a good way to oh imply. Got it. So it's a good way to imply motion without really having to take a lot of time to figure it out you know it's just like a quick way to sketch it out but as far as looking for cool perspectives yeah that's always a good way to start but it's not necessarily the only reason why you're looking for photos sometimes you just want like one little spot like this i don't care about any of this crazy whatever this durex piping is this one big pipe here that's really close to the camera that I may use, but everything else is probably going to go in the trash, right? So that's just that's just the way I go about it. Uh, maybe this one too. I got a couple of pipes, different things. I was thinking like Alita, uh, Battle Angel. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's a really good movie if you haven't. And it's also a really good cyberpunk movie. But there is a scene where she's running on a pipe over the city. So you can see the city below her and then the people chasing her behind her. And I thought that would be a really cool scene to figure out to do. So that's the general two ideas, right? We have a chase scene, a car scene, and then I also thought maybe we could do like somebody jumping off a building over to the next building, kind of like a parkour scene. But, you know, I don't know. I don't know about that one. That's, that seems a little bit too cheesy. Something that's already been done a thousand times. So let's, um, let's get started here, you know? Stop rambling. <laughs> let's figure out what we're doing uh let's see so let's do something with a perspective i was thinking i was thinking we could probably do we could start with the first idea that i had which was somebody running across a city and maybe jumping through like a low income area so it'd be a bit more industrial and stuff and i thought it would look cool so if we mix some of these pictures together, that may end up being sick. Because see, this right here isn't actually a place that people live, right? This is some kind of factory. But we can always make it uh, somewhere that people live and just kind of fake it ourselves, right? That's what we do. We're fakers. <laughs> yeah, Alita's great. Uh, it's such a great movie. And, and I wish a sequel would hurry up, but, you know... This year has delayed a lot of good movies, and that's an issue, but it's something that had to be done. So let's start. Let's do, I'm thinking this, something like this would be cool, because it has this kind of contrast between the fog right here. So if we mix it in like this, keep an eye on the navigator up here on the right. It's just a good way to see the general thumbnail of what's going on. I think if we kind of just put it like here or so. You can already see it starting to form some kind of idea, right? 
like a darker color or lighter color or pin lights. I like darker color because it still has this fade to it. But actually, I think we might put the other image on top and darker color that instead. Let's Yeah, we'll leave that like that, actually. I think that's fine for now, right? I think that it's not perfect, but I think it'll work for now. So let's start figuring out how these connect to each other. So let's see. If we kind of squeeze this in a little bit, I don't like the perspective there. That's fine. This right here, I wonder what it would look like if we went ahead and just deleted where this building is. That doesn't have to be perfect. I don't want to say fix it up in post because that's one of the worst ways to work because you're just delaying work until the very end and then you still have to do the same amount of work. But we can rough out the shape of this building without worrying about the exact mask, right? And just see what it looks like. Um. Now I think this is cooler, this little Duga, Duga Dubu, <laughs> whatever this is, I have no idea what that is right there. But if we go ahead and add this other picture that I found, which is still industrial, uh, but it had this staircase looking thing that I really liked. Yeah, this one. I like the contrast on this staircase right here on the right side. So I think if we do like that, yeah, that looks cool, dude. That looks pretty neat. Yeah, so we'll do a lighter color just to bring in some more of this haze. I don't know about up here. Yeah, that's fine up there. We'll leave it up there for now. Delete some of that. Delete some of this blue in the walls. We could probably bring this hook back in a little bit just by deleting, you know, just erasing the layer above it. That's fine. I don't know. Yeah, that's fine being like a fade back there to add some depth to the image. I don't know if I like this darker. Nah, that's fine, fade. So that's fine. Uh, there's a bit of a line right here. That's obviously just because we threw three pictures together and didn't actually think about what we were doing. So we need to fix that line. And we can do that if we just grab this layer here and content aware, see what it does. It's probably not going to be great, but it's going to at least get rid of that line. Yeah, see, it, it, give, it gets rid of the line, but it does cause the issue where we lose this little, this like, what is this, like a wall here kind of thing. So we'll just, uh, we'll just kind of get rid of it barely, but it doesn't want to obey. So we'll wait. We'll do that on the checkpoint when, you know, I mix all the layers together and stuff like that. It'd be a lot easier to deal with. So. Let's go ahead and add some focus point or focal point, right? Because right now we have this cool industrial thing, but it's not one. It's not cyberpunk, right? Uh, so we need to make it more like somebody's living here. This is like a low income area or industrial workers live here or something. But we also need to have a focal point of where the person is running from. Uh, so we need something that he's running on. I like this pipe idea, like I said before. This pipe would look sick if we can get it to work correctly, which sometimes it doesn't really want to. Lighter color seems to be okay, but we might do darker color or pin light. Lighter color. Lighter color seems okay. And then if we, I think if we paint underneath it a dark value, then it'll pop back out. Yeah, see? So if you take like a dark value and then paint underneath a lighter color uh, like a layer set to lighter color then what happens is it makes this overlay a lot more contrasty you know helps pop it out so while I figure this out and try to get this pipe to work oops uh, let's go ahead and talk about next week right so we've got we've got PlayStation 5 coming out we got the Xbox coming out We've got uh, 
it would have been Cyberpunk on the 19th, but not anymore. Uh, but we do have a crap load of games coming out. We, we got uh, Sackboy. We've got Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We got, uh, technically, Assassin's Creed and Watch Dogs have already come out, but I'm just speaking next-gen-wise. Uh, Watch Dogs would be the 24th, so that's not really next week. But it is still going to be sick. It's going to be legit. Uh, then we've got Call of Duty, which, man, Call of Duty, man, come on. Like, I know Call of Duty has that stereotype of, you know, oh, everybody likes to hate on Call of Duty. But the problem with, with that I have with Call of Duty right now is that it's 200 gigs. And that's not even because it has to be. That's just because they just haven't optimized it, you know? Like, they, they could very easily fix that file size issue, but they just haven't done it because... They know they don't really have to do it. They could if they wanted to. They just honestly don't really have to. People are still going to buy the game and download it anyway, so there's not really an urgency to fix it. But if you get the PlayStation 5, it's freaking 850 gig storage space, right? And Call of Duty is 200 gigs by itself. So then you end up getting a quarter of your entire new console that you just got uh, ends up being Call of Duty. And, you know, there's always conspiracy theories to why companies do different things. And one of the conspiracy theories that I've heard uh, is that they like, they want to do that to kind of reduce, like they want to do that on purpose because they want to reduce how many people or how many games people can play. Because that means statistically they would have to play Call of Duty more if they don't have a lot of other options. But I don't think that's the case. I think that's some Illuminati style conspiracy. I think the case is actually, uh, wow, Photoshop had an update. Is this a transparency lock now? Nope. What is this? I don't know what that is. It's, this is, this is new. That's weird. I can turn that on or off. That's even weirder. I have, I have had to look that, look into that. I didn't know Photoshop had an update, but, uh, so. Call of Duty, I think it's not conspiracy level craziness like that. I think what it is is that they had to program the file size for last gen, well, technically current gen, you know, systems, but current gen systems had hard drives. So they had to use a lot of redundant data, which then increased the file size. But for the PlayStation 5 and the new Xbox, they don't really have to do that anymore, which is great, except the fact that I don't see them being uh, proactive enough to make two different versions of the game. I bet you all they did, instead of reprogramming it to the new gens having less, you know, like a lower file size because it's SSD now, I can guarantee that they just left it because they were just like, it's going to be expensive. We don't freaking want to do that. So this time it's going to be 200 gigs and people can just deal with it. And then next time we'll go ahead and lower the file size for the next gen. That's probably what they did. I, again, it's all hearsay because nobody really knows except for the people that did it. But I'm willing to bet that that is the actual thing that they did there. So we've got a bit of a pipe here, right? I like the perspective of it as following this kind of narrow tunnel thing. But its color is a bit off. So it's a bit too blue, you know? So if we do color balance, go to midtones and just make it a little bit more red. Well, probably yellow actually. Yellow and red. Something like that. Highlights as well. Just to kind of fit this warm industrial orange that's going on here. And then we need to make it look like somebody lives here. We'll add the people and that's totally fine, but this still looks like a factory right it doesn't look like people live here so let's uh let's let's do that let's figure out how people live here and a good way to do that is to find pictures where people live so let's go with um, something like this actually might work pretty well if we try this because this is kind of the same perspective already set if we uh Flip it. There we go. Let's do pin lights. And 
set it like that. The problem is obviously the cars make it look like there's a ground plane. We don't want that. I'm just going to see what darker color and pin light differences are. Yeah. I think pin light is the way to go, but we're going to change the levels of it. Fix the midtones. We want to remove. One, we want to remove how contrasty the pin light is, right? So if we just fix the midtones up a bit, lighten them up. There we go. And then get rid of the sky barrier down here. Because we don't want them to look like it's a street. We just want people to live here. Yeah, that's, that's fine. It's still rough, obviously, but it's fine. Get rid of some of this up here, too that and then the cars are causing a bit of a perspective issue because your brain recognizes cars you recognize there's a street level we don't have a street level here the street levels below us by like you know miles or whatever so we'll leave that on there that's fine and let's find uh, another picture of something like that probably a higher up picture though so I'm not seeing one here that I have set up. Maybe here, well, maybe, maybe not. It might be too bright, but we can try it. If we do darker color instead of pin light, we can grab some of those, some of the ideas that are got going on here. Pin light's gonna be too bright, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. So leave it on darker color. Get rid of this little blue bit up here. But the rest can stay. Except for this weird sign here. I like the red. That's totally fine. But the sign <laughs> sign language is making it look like uh, the perspective was wrong. I didn't like that. So now we have more of a city color scheme with the pink and cyberpunky, right? But it's not, it's, you know, it's still industrial, but we're, we're starting to add this feeling that there's, like, buildings here that people work in or live in, stuff like that. So let's go to, uh, let's go to get some more of that. Let's go with, I keep going back to New York, but it's just because it's a great, it's a great place to go to for this kind of stuff. Um, let's see here, this is picture, these are pictures that I took from my New York pack. Um, let's see. Actually, you know what, while we're, this just reminded me, the other shot that I was talking about where somebody is jumping off a building, kind of like Fifth Element, right? I took these shots in New York where I was on a building looking down and, you know, I freaking sweaty hands trying not to drop the camera because I was freaking out about it. Uh, but, it does come up with this cool shot and I took these years ago and it'd be cool to actually implement them in something so let's try it let's just mix in some of the ones that I shot here something like that uh, pin light dark and lighter color yeah lighter color works so we'll do like that and it's creating this kind of fake intersection right because there's no intersection here so it's creating this which is looking cool. And then if we also, I think I took a third one. Hmm. There's this one, but that one's perspective's way off. And instead of trying to fix it, I think what we'll do is we'll, we're gonna just bring in some colors here. So if we just do like that, and pin light, it's gonna look like a mess, right? But if we kind of blur it up a little bit, well, my tablet just restarted because there was an update. <laughs> so the screen's going to flash. So if it goes black, you'll know why. And we'll let that uh we'll let that do its thing real quick while I do this. So let's do um probably motion blur probably. Yeah, just a little bit. Just enough to add like a uh a bit of a blur obviously 
to the image so that way it doesn't look like a, an entire catastrophe of an image. And then we can <laughs> and then we can uh, we can delete all the crap that we don't want. That's fine. I'll just have to use my mouse until my tablet decides to kick back in. Something like that. So, you know, before and after. It's adding this mess of colors, but it's totally fine because we're going to delete some of it. Like that. I don't know if I like this corner at all, actually. Yeah, like that. That's fine. Turn on! Gotta love tablet driver updates. There we go. Let me plug that back in. It's also getting kind of dark in here. Uh, Alexa, turn on standard. Okay. The suspense. This device has only one registered account. Alexa, stop. <laughs> All right. She's always so sassy. Okay, so uh, we got the city shot kind of going on. I'm gonna leave it for now because, like I said, it's kind of cheesy. It's been done before. Ghost and Shell did it, where she jumped off the building. Fifth Element did it, where she jumped off the building. Uh, even Assassin's Creed, the movie with uh, uh, Michael Fassbender did it. It's been done, right? So it is cool. I mean, even uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse did it when he jumped off the building and all the glass broke behind him. It was really cool. But it's been done. So we're going to kind of skip it. But I thought I should still lay it out just as visually be like, yeah, I get it, right? So let's go back to industrial place here this kind of factory idea that we've got going on we definitely don't want pictures of a graveyard yeah we need something need something city wise but something from higher up to give this illusion that we are higher up so we can try this well not that That's too much. Dang it. Let's try some Times Square stuff. Classic, right? Obviously. But with higher up perspective instead of the crowd. Something like these. Something like that might look cool. We obviously don't want the H&M part, but we're going to throw this in there anyways. Because, see, it adds this kind of color, right? And right now it's industrial, which is totally fine because it's low income, so it's going to be, you know, dirtier, right? And then if this is like a mining facility or something, it's going to be even worse. But we still want to have this kind of cyberpunk colorful feeling to it, you know? That's just, that's just the genre. That's just the way it works, bro. So we need to fix that. We need, to, we need to capture that and get it to work. So let's delete all that sky stuff. We don't want any of that stuff. Yep. And then I forgot where this building goes. Maybe here? Just perspective real quick. Something like that. And then I'm thinking like that would be fine. Let me just delete the HMM part. Keep that red light I like that, even though it's just, it's a technically a traffic light, but it looks cool as far as what we got going on here. Lightly delete some of the building to kind of haze it up. Like that. There we go. So yeah, that's looking cool. I like this. I like this setup. So let's try um. Let's try something like a car scene now, you know? Let's just kind of just rough it out, see what it would look like. Uh, that means I gotta go back to my collection of pictures. Yeah, so PlayStation's coming out, uh, but I do have a few questions for you lovely people. Uh, one question would be a for like matte paint, right? The website. 
it has a ton of pictures of you know environments and landscapes and interior design and stuff like that and it's super great for that but it's not great as far as animal references there's no wildlife focuses right would you guys be interested in wildlife photos coming in because i live in uh like central florida so i can go to zoos and nature walks all over the place and get tropical animals and stuff like that because i do photography on the side so i can start uh like personally me and then of course other people get involved but personally we can bring in animal shots and animal shots are not great for matte paint obviously but they are great for concept art when you're designing like uh, creature designs some animals like bugs and stuff are really good inspiration for vehicle design, sci-fi vehicles and stuff like that. Uh, anything really, right? Anything related to an animal, uh, even clothes. You could use like scales and fur and stuff to help design a character's outfit. You know, there's a huge margin of things that you can do with it. And I was just wondering if you guys would be interested in that being a thing involved in matte paint. Uh, another question is, I have started doing private classes, and I know this is kind of like a class for free, but the private classes are more of one-on-one, -on -one, you know? Right now, I'm kind of just talking to the void, and then I'm doing whatever I want, you're just observing. But in a private class, I, I can one-on-one -on -one talk to you, show you how to do things, help you with the software, you know, just tell you everything that you need to know in like a personal class. So if you would like to do that, you can let me know as well. Uh, and then there was a third thing that I was going to ask, but because of the stress of starting this stream, I have completely forgot what it was. And when it comes back, I will, <laughs> I will be sure to ask it. But right now, we're going to go back to the work. So car chase scene. I'm thinking, I'm thinking like cars would be flying through here. We could have just like a rough, rough idea of what it would look like here. Maybe something like this, maybe. Just bring it in for some action. And yeah, lighter color worked. Let's put it like that. And then we will delete some of that stuff. Yeah, we'll leave it. That's fine. We'll just uh, rough it out. There we go. So then we'll bring in some cars. I was thinking a motorcycle design, like a motorcycle chase would be cool. And then like I said, with the fish fin flowing off of it. But I think it might even be cooler if a car was going through and motorcycles were chasing it. Again, classic. Been done before, but it looks cool. So why not? I like this wall section here which actually might look pretty cool on the industrial part maybe maybe not maybe lighter color nah that's fine we'll just leave it okay cool yeah uh, you know just I'll take notes on uh, who's down for either one. The private classes, of course, would not be free just because I have client work and stuff like that. And these streams, like you've seen, I do them once a month. So it's not like I have <laughs> the personal time to do private classes to every single person. Uh, so, of course, there would have to be a charge. But that's the way of the road. That's the way it goes. I like this idea, too, by the way. I, I, I saw this hallway thing and I thought it would be cool if it was upside down and it created this kind of repeating pattern on it or even that might be kind of cool nah lighter color whoops lighter color yeah see that works on the roof looking down shots but as far as our pipe, I don't think it would fit very well, but we can try it. Transform perspective. Let's bring it like, whoops. Like 
that. It's just like a general idea of what it would look like. No, not feeling it. I like this roof though. This is cool. This might be in something else later. But as at the moment, no, we'll leave it. So yeah, car sh car scene. I'm not feeling the car scene. Just like as an idea, I, I think it's just this industrial chase scene would look cooler. As far as you know, what we're going for here. But that doesn't mean I can't try this car scene to make it look cool. Something like this. What up, Ian? Uh, me and Ian just finished a uh, little project. Well, not finished the project, but like we did a project together, or at least part of it. And uh, if you go to Ian's art station, you can check it out. It's pretty legit. It's pretty cool. And it was fun. And Ian's a cool dude. He's got that cool factor. <laughs> Alright, so... I like this car. But, obviously, it's not cyberpunk, so that's not a big deal right now. I'm kind of just figuring out what this all looks like. So we're just going to roughly cut this out. Do 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 do. There we go. This is always the hardest process, or hardest part of the process is coming up with an idea, right? You can you can think in your head about different ideas and stuff like that, but as far as getting it going, it always takes forever, no matter what you do. So it's just easier if you uh, kind of just don't freak out about it. You know, just kind of try different things. It's going to take a second. You know, it's going to take some time to get it going. But at least you can get this idea roughed out and then move on with your life. <laughs> so, I know the perspective on the car is way off. That's not what I'm focused on at the moment. I'm focused on the composition and what it looks like. Because I just don't feel like this is going to be worth taking effort on. Hmm. Also thought this might be kind of cool uh, for the looking down shot when somebody jumps out. Just have this probably pendant light. Nah. Very darker color. And just have this kind of uh, circular tunnel that somebody's jumping down into. Actually it might ooh, you know, it might actually be kind of cool to throw it into this industrial area as yeah as like uh, some support some concrete support for everything that's pretty dope let's uh let's mess with that a little bit so let's kind of do like that that also gives us like a cement pipe so this pipe would kind of just be built into the cement support which is pretty legit Gonna stretch it out a little bit more. Something like that, I think, would be cool. And then, I think lighter color is the way to go here. But pin light kind of looks cool because we lose we lose the close up supports, right? We lose that. Well, I keep pointing at the screen like you can see it. We lose this part. Come on, last, ugh, I hate this lasso tool so much. All right, so this right here, we lose this part if we do pin light, but we get this part up here, right? Which looks cool, because it gives us this kind of contrast of light. And then of course, if we take that circle part out, then we get the city behind it, which looks legit, right? That looks freaking sick. So what we're gonna do is we're going to duplicate this so that we can get uh, Hannah Montana rolling in here and get the best of both worlds, right? So, go back to lighter color on the duplicate one, and then we get to keep this cement support if we delete that part. There we go. So we get to, like, just, uh, we get to keep this cool little front element here, but then we use the pin light option for the light at the top there. I think, honestly, out of all of this, this top left one is where we're going. 
So I'm just not even going to worry about continuing the sketches for the rest of the stuff because this is, you know, I'm feeling it, right? Once you start feeling it, you're like, all right, this is it. This is where we're going. I don't like the perspective on this pipe right here, though. So I'm just going to, like, I'm just going to just gonna fake it. If I can, if I can do that and stop being a dweeb about it. So we'll move it down and change perspective to match this pipe. Like that, sort of. And then we'll just kind of content aware to complete these hidden or these empty spots. It's not gonna be perfect, but it'll do something. Yeah, see that works. So I don't like this part being so prevalent. So we'll get rid of that. Honestly, I don't like any of that. I think that's cool by itself. Yeah, so this is getting like a uh, like a colorful, because it's cyberpunk, right? Vibe. But with all the pinks and the industrial feel to it, it kind of feels like Rage 2. I don't know if you ever played Rage 2. Rage 1 was all about brown. It was just industrial, sand, sun, brown, right? But Rage 2, they decided to go and sneeze color on everything, like some kind of Jackson Pollock painting, which was totally great. It worked. Uh, I love that game 100%. Which was by luck because there's a there's a trophy in that game that is just complete luck if you find all of the things, and I happened to find find it on the first try. So you know <laughs> that was pretty neat. But this is uh, this is what it's feeling like. It's feeling a bit like Rage Two, which is kind of cyberpunk. Like this is this is our cyberpunk world that we've made. If this is the industry area, like the in industry complex block district, whatever you want to call it. It would make sense, right? This this kind of brown overtone and everything, and then colorful mixed into it because of the fact that people still live here. So we're gonna keep this kind of layout that's going on here. Cause it's looking it's looking pretty fly for a white guy. And we're gonna try to find something to add some more advertisements to it because this being a low income area, they would have advertisements, but they wouldn't be clean advertisements they'd be like run down kind of like the classic chinatown uh in your head you know when you think of chinatown you think of people on the streets trying to sell your rolex that kind of idea which they do that by the way they actually <laughs> when we were in new york they came up to uh one of the people that i was with and <laughs> uh some lady was like excuse me do you have the time and then the person i was with was like uh no i don't and then the lady like opens up her coat and she has like a bunch of watches and she's like well if you buy a watch for me then you'll know the time and that was super smooth like that was so so cheesy but it worked and it was really funny we didn't buy a watch of course uh because it probably didn't even work but it was really funny at the same time uh let's try something like this this looks kind of cool it's daytime, there's advertisements, but they're not, like, super fancy advertisements. Of course, it's Lion King and New Yorkie, but they're not, uh, like, neon, you know? It's still just kind of crappy advertisements that are going on here. Again, maybe lighter color might work better. Hmm. We'll try something else. Let's do something else. There was a shot that I took that I found last night. I was just skimming through and stuff, and I totally forgot what it was. So I'm just, you know, kicking myself in the head because I'm like, what was that shot? Maybe this would work. I might do something. Starbucks, right? Lighter color. Pen light. Hmm. Sort of, sort of not. If we kind of shrink this a little bit. Like that. Get rid of that bit. And then get rid of this part. 
like this. Keep that. Actually, we'll keep this roof part. Uh, maybe. Maybe the problem is this roof. Maybe if we just like cut that out, that might work better. Which means this part would have to fade in some more. So just kind of just lightly erase that. Fade in the background. So before and after, we're getting a little bit of detail there, but not enough to really, you know, brag about to your grandma. So I think we might actually just content aware out this giant LED sign here. Yeah, that's looking better. We don't want to lose that pink, that kind of colorful aspect to it in the background, but we do want to keep that uh, dark contrast to it. So I think we'll just kind of erase a little bit. That's fine. Sweet. All right. So yeah, I think we're going to just work on this. So let's go ahead and just crop it down just so my computer doesn't have an aneurysm. Uh, contiguous or whatever, however you say, I really need to look up how to say that word. Contiguous, 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 eh, I don't forget enough. But, <laughs> but let's go ahead and crop that down to just this area. Crop, there we go. Sweet. So then we can go ahead and make a checkpoint, grab all the layers, duplicate, merge, Baba buoy. Sweet. So, uh, what should we do next? We have to fix this right corner. I don't like this. Uh, it's not that I don't like it. It's this right corner right here with the stop sign or the traffic light. It's just a little bit off compared to everything else. That's too much. But I do like this little orange bit that I made here. So let's uh, let's try let's try it again. Let's see what it does if you do it twice. Mm. It's trying, you know. It's like a it's like a third grade spelling bee. They're trying. <laughs> but let's uh let's let's continue. Let's try to figure this out. Keeps wanting to grab some more of this gray over here, which is fine. Do what you want to do, but it's not what I want. Stop. Freaking do something different, bro. just keeps doing it less and less but it's still doing it that's kind of cool though I like I like this let's get rid of these weird poles that are sticking up here but I do like this being hanging down like this right because it's industrial so they would have stuff hanging around like that which is pretty nice so let's uh let's play with that let's do let's mess with some random elements in here uh, Maybe a train? Because I did a I did a train in this that matte paint thumbnail for this video. You'll see a train in it. But I think we can probably make something else in there. If we go to that train that I had. I think it was in Tokyo. Yeah. So I used this train in the thumbnail. But I think with this train, we could probably mess with that. Yeah, see, the problem is that it's turning this into like a clean area. We don't want it to be clean. I do kind of like that idea, though. So let's let's try keeping all of this stuff, but then deleting all of that this Let's see what that looks like yeah it's not looking terrible I'm content aware to kind of just fill out some extra bits here I want to take this dark part put it down here yeah because then we have like somewhat of a city in the background it's very implied and it's very faint but it is still being implied right it's still an idea our pipe we've kind of lost 
the focus point or the focal point of the piping. So let's kind of bring that back in. Let's just could probably just paint that in. So let's uh, continue this pipe. I think if we do like some kind of horizontal part, maybe like here, might look cool. There's no real reasoning to this. It's more of just what would uh, look cooler compositionally. Would you want a straight pipe all the way down through the city, or would you want some kind of branching piping system, right? So let's grab like a dark value, paint on top of it like that, and then bring in some of that concrete color. Yeah, there we go. Oops. There we go. So now we have this kind of layer that's breaking up the monotony, right, of the straight line. Perspective is a little bit off. Let's fix that. Yeah, it looks fine. So then we can cut that over like that. And I'm probably just going to do a real quick rough, just a rough painting, which I don't do too much in these live streams, but it does happen in, in you know, reality. I'll just rough out some general feeling of the area because the photos are just not doing what I wanted them to do. So the photos are great for speeding up the process, but you still end up having to paint at some point, right? You're not going to... For concept art, at least if you're doing like what I do, which please don't copy me. Not because, you know, I want to be special. No, it's not because of that at all. <laughs> it's because if you decide to copy my art style completely, you know, you're going to end up uh, just like a clone, right? And that's totally fine. Like, look at uh, Fang Zhu, right? He's got his classes that he teaches people and stuff like that. But if you look at his students' work, they tend to have the same style that he does, which is not like he's building clones of himself, but it does factor in the fact that he, it's because the way he taught them, right? And if you teach somebody that this is the right way to do it, then what ends up happening is they only do it that way. So they only try to just mimic your style, right? And that's totally fine. You'll probably get work, you know? It's, you'll get your career. You'll get people to notice your work because it's actually good because you're mimicking the style of somebody that's already established, right? But you end up not creating your own style. So creatively, you may be able to design different things, but your rendering style is going to be very similar. Which, you know, ethically and stuff like that is totally fine. Legally, it's fine. Nobody cares. It's just more of, as a human race, if we all copy the same art style because we know it works, it's going to end up being everything looks the same. And sometimes your art style, the way you render stuff or come across stuff on accident, like I did with this uh, cement tunnel here, you end up coming across cool ideas but if everybody does the same techniques and the same exact process and the same exact way of rendering then what what ends up happening is you don't really come across different ideas than somebody else would have and it's not really a big deal as far as your work you know people are going to hire you because your work is cool but as far as the industry progressing with cool ideas and stuff it's going to kind of hinder that and that's just a personal opinion. That's not really a fact that I have evidence for, but it's just something that I feel as a human being that never leaves his house. <laughs> that's the general idea. So my, my, uh, my idea of tutorials and stuff is more of showing you how you can do it, but then just have fun with it yourself. You know, like figure it out, take the jumping off point of my lessons and what I tell you and show you and stuff like that, but still figure out the rest of the process you're on your own. And I don't mean that I don't want to teach you the whole process. I will teach you like this. I'll show you from start to finish of what I do, but on your own terms, look at a bunch of different artists. Like look at uh, how I've mentioned him before, Theo Prince. Uh, he looks, his work is absolutely ridiculous, uh, the way he handles color schemes, but that's just the way he does it. And, uh, Fang Zhu, his stuff is great design, but it's very noticeable. Like, 
he does this one technique a lot, which works. I've done it too, but uh, let's say you want to define a building here like that. Then he would do this kind of thing where it's darker here, and then he would uh, reverse the mask selection, and then just add like a haze layer here, which I do all the time, but he would do like quite a bit, right? So there would be a huge contrast right there of this building, which works. It totally works as concept art. I'm not saying it doesn't work. The problem is, I'm actually gonna leave that because like, <laughs> I'm gonna make that a building. But the problem is that if you do it just like he does, then your work's gonna look like his. Your work is not gonna look like your own work. You know what I'm saying? And as far as companies hiring and stuff, it'll work. It's just, you don't have your own, you won't have your own personal way of doing things. So what I would recommend is just looking at a bunch of different people, not just me, not just Feng Zhu, not just, uh, what is it, Pixel Brush, I think? Or I think it's Pixel Brush or One Cube Brush on YouTube. Uh, he has like, there's something like that. Or Noah Bradley, you know, uh, even Eaton Xana. Like they all have great art styles, but if you look at them and then you only try to do what they do, then it's just going to hinder the way you work, you know? Just look at all of them, see what they do, and then kind of just merge all of them into your own style. Just kind of, you know, do your own thing, man. Have fun with it. You don't have to copy these people perfectly. That's why you do master studies, like, uh, you know, back back in the day when you had to study, like, uh, Da Vinci and Michelangelo and Rembrandt and all those good peeps. You're not just studying one, you know, you're studying all of them because you're trying to figure out how they did what they did. And then once you start understanding a bit more, then you kind of just create your own style based off of that, right? That's the way it should be, you know? Just kind of do your thing. So, you know, that's my <laughs> that's my ramble. I like this orange right here. Or orange, depending on what state and country you're from. But orange is the way I'm going to go. So, this also lit up bit like this, the shadow is really cool. So I'm going to kind of try to bring it into more of a fade instead of it just being like a harsh shadow. And then what we can do with this light is we can use it to emphasize our focus point, which would be the character. So if we bring this light because the light would be coming from this direction, like that, right? That's just the way it looks. Probably, yeah, probably actually a little bit more like that kind of thing. A little bit more of a narrow light direction. So we can play with it, and we can pretend that these two beams right here are creating this kind of cast shadow. And there's a cast shadow here you can see it where the lines intersect there and there. It's because probably this one is casting a shadow. But if we fake it, what we can do is we can just kind of continue this light here. And then perspective has to be has to follow the perspective. So about here. Here ish. Here and then bigger stroke right here. And then what we can do is we can throw our main character right here in this biggest light spot, and that will help. Uh, that'll help bring him out, or her, whoever it is, bring them out as the main focal point, right? So something like that. And then bring in a shadow. Like that. Yeah, I didn't plan for this to end up looking like this, but that's, you know, that's the fun of it. You kind of just explore, figure out what stuff looks like on accident. Just 
kind of fix that up a little bit. Let's say this pipe continues all the way down, which means there would be a bit of a bounce light from the bottom. So if we grab some of this orange, probably. That's too bright. Darken it. I just kind of like to use a mouse for this. Something like that, where you just draw a line, but not so ridiculous. This mouse rest that I have, by the way, uh, is pretty cool. Instead of it being a bean bag or something, it's this little thing. And it's made by a company that's a very small company called Carpio Hub, I think. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, and this isn't, I'm not getting paid to tell you this, but I do actually really like this thing. It's like a, it's like a soft plastic, you know, that is good for your wrist. And they come in two different sizes and uh, different colors. There's a black and this is a white one. I like the white one because it matches my desk. But essentially what it is, is it's, it's designed, per, I don't know if you can see it better that way. It's designed perfectly for your wrist shape. Uh, and what it does is instead of having the pressure here, you know, like when a bean bag or something where you have this leverage to move your wrist, the pressure ends up on the very bottom of your palm. So you can't really hang your weight of your hand which causes wrist problems you know it kind of just forces your hand to stay there uh i am leaning way over here to the left just because it's comfortable for me so mine is actually tilted so i'm like this i'm sideways it's fine it'll work but it's just a lot more comfortable than a bean bag and it's only like 30 bucks uh so i think it's called cart carpio hub delta hub I look that up Delta Carpio Hub. Ah, it's called. It, the company is Delta Hub, and the thing, the actual wrist rest, is Carpio. That's the name of it. So I'll put that in the chat real quick, just so you guys have access to it. First world problems. There you go. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the the way it goes there. It's nice. I like it. Um, and yes, we don't make mistakes. <laughs> we make happy accidents. Uh, Bob Ross style. So let's get back to this bounce light. First off, this this needs to be fixed. This little like harsh harsh line right here. I'm not a fan of it. Just gonna let's get rid of that. Break it up. Break it up. And then darken it a little bit more. Okay, so this orange line can just kind of fade down a little bit because we don't want it to be super crazy. Yeah, something like that. That's fine. Okay. Cool. So now we need to add some kind of... Uh, we're just going to make some crazy building silhouette here real quick. cyberpunk style use some of this random color schemes and stuff everywhere to kind of just imply what's going on cool in fact we may even just break this up like that maybe so if that was like this then this would be like that. And then maybe have this kind of just like that. Yeah, that looks fine. So we'll do uh we'll do like continue this shape. But instead of coming all the way around and doing another circle to break up the symmetrical the symmetry of the image, we'll just kind of just bend it and then go straight down. Bend and snap. <laughs> just bend and snap so bend snap bend snap yeah that's fine and then we'll take this kind of pink value go underneath uh, I need to get rid of some of this something like that 
Josh, use a lasso tool because then you can do smooth designs. I know. I'm just lazy. Okay. So then we can go underneath. Yeah, bring some of that pink in. Some of those different colors just to kind of imply that the city goes behind this a little bit more. Like that. Yeah, that looks, that looks cool. All right, then we will fix this not perfect line here. Perspective wise, this would curve more that way. There we go, and then bring that in like that. Yeah, looks cool. It's looking legit. Nope. But man, I am stoked for next week. Like, <laughs> like I am just so psyched for Thursday. Best Buy is not having. Uh, oh, the story of how I got it, right? So a lot of people are having uh, issues getting a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox because of pre-orders just not being in stock, right? <laughs> well, being the guy that has no life, I uh, <laughs> I just... The day that they had the PlayStation 5 announcement that actually said that they were going to have the pre-orders the next day, that midnight I went online thinking that the pre-orders would start the next day, but if anybody... If you're anybody that followed the news behind that catastrophe, it did not start the next day. PlayStation said the pre-orders would start the day, you know, the next day, but retailers were like, screw you, we're going to do it anyways. <laughs> so every retailer, Best Buy, Target, Walmart, uh, your, your third cousin down the street, every single person that sells stuff <laughs> decided to do it all at one time and hours before midnight. We're talking like maybe 8 p.m., right? Uh, that's an issue because I wasn't ready. I wasn't prepared for it at all. I was thinking it was going to be the next day. So at midnight, I checked because technically midnight's the next day. So I was like, well, maybe they'll start it at midnight. And then by the time I got out of midnight, this chaos had already been going on for like four hours and I had zero idea. I had no idea. Uh, so I checked all the websites and they're all sold out already because it's been four hours. Target was done. Amazon was done. And we know Amazon actually sold too many more than they actually uh, had the option of getting on time. So they've had to cancel some orders because, or not cancel, but tell people that, hey, uh, your PlayStation is not going to arrive on launch day because we ordered, we sold too many pre-orders, then we can order four, you know? So people got kind of screwed over there. But Best Buy, the website at midnight had crashed and it, it had crashed hard hard like it just would not work at all you'd put something in your cart two seconds later it wasn't in your cart you put it in the cart and it finally let you go to purchase uh it wouldn't let you purchase it and then you would time out and then it would move it from your cart again and you'd have to try again it was like a whole freaking ordeal but i realized that since they had crashed so hard uh they were not able to sell any because nobody could buy it the website had just caved in on critical mass so nobody could buy a PlayStation, and because of that fact, they still had some in stock at midnight. Well, I kept trying and trying, and it wouldn't work, and it just, you know, you're getting, like, demoralized, right? But I just didn't care. I just didn't want to give up, because I knew that at some point it was going to work. I didn't know when. I just knew at some point it would. So I decided that I was just going to stay up as late as possible, constantly trying until it worked. And it took until, like, midnight to I think three in the morning uh, until enough people had given up to where the website could actually collect itself and start working again and then it let me through and then I finally got it um, and I was freaking stoked but now Best Buy instead of doing a midnight release on Thursday they're doing a morning release so I have my like reservation to go grab it at like eight in the morning I could have done six in the morning but who who wants to get up at 6 in the morning to go grab a PlayStation? I mean, I, I'm super excited for it, but the problem with doing that is even though you get it super early, that means you're going to be exhausted and, and you're not really going to be awake enough to enjoy it, you know? So, screw that, man. I just did 8, eight o'clock in the morning. Had to go there and grab it and then sprint, full sprint back to the car to get home and play it. 
so stoked. Uh, yeah, yeah. GTA Five was free and uh, freaking Epic. Epic crashed hard. Uh, it's just what happens. And you would, I understand that bandwidth. Like, they have the bandwidth to handle people. But when you're doing something major, you would expect the website developers or whoever handles the bandwidth to expect that this is going to cause a crash because so many people are going to come in, right? And major companies like Epic and Best Buy, you would expect them to have freaking websites that can handle it. GameStop. Not only GameStop, instead of crashing, GameStop actually, uh, the website's protection, like the security the cyber security actually thought because there were so many people coming in at once trying to buy the playstation that they thought it was a, a cyber attack so the website actually started blocking anybody from coming in because they thought it was like a dds ddos attack dos attack <laughs> oh man it was oh it was crazy it was just it was just chaos that's all it was but it's over ish you know people are still struggling to pre-order because they can't keep them in stock speaking of keeping them in stock man how about razor with that new mouse that cyberpunk mouse uh the razor ultimate viper ultimate i think it's what it's called it looks sick it looks like cyberpunk 2077 which you know automatically i want to buy it but then it's wireless and it has that cool charging stand and everything and it's so dope but i got an email yesterday saying it was in stock and between 20 minutes of me getting the email and then going into the living room and just having to look at the phone and seeing that I got an email, uh, it was out of stock again. That's just absolutely insane how quickly that thing sold out again. So, you know. But yeah, uh, just to explain what I'm doing here, I'm. this is the detailing part where you can kind of shut your brain off, which is what I was doing. I was just talking to you beautiful people. Uh, and in doing so, my brain was just fixing general ideas so before and after you can see that it hasn't really changed much of the idea it's just kind of cleaned up different uh depth values and stuff like that to kind of make it more obvious what's going on so before and after would actually be this versus that right it works so now we've got this going on we need Might be, we might actually uh, duplicate, make a checkpoint. We might actually adjust the perspective. We might make it more dramatic. If we just kind of do that kind of thing. Uh, and then if we rotate it on an axis, and then uh, perspective, there we go. Maybe do something like that. Yeah, but then we lose that circle shape. Maybe like that and make it bigger. I'm figuring it out, we'll get there. I think this will work. I think something like this, where it's slightly not perfect perspective because it's, you know, like, whoa, it's action, the camera's slanted, no way. <laughs> to make it look like something's moving, we just turned the camera sideways a little bit, whoa. Yeah, I think that's what, I think that's where we're gonna go. I think that's the way we're gonna do it. Uh, so let's, let's get the city going in the background a little bit more. This stuff down here at the bottom, especially. Um, Let's try Let's try something actually you know what I think I have some cool industrial stuff I might be able to throw in there. Something like this. Maybe. Actually this kinda looks cool. This might be a... I don't know what this would be, but I can always try it. See what it does. Uh, 
because this is like an industrial area, so it makes sense that there'd be industrial equipment, but I'm not feeling that. So let's uh, let's start throwing in some stuff. I have I have these things. Where are they? These structures, rooftop structures that I used in that sketch for the thumbnail in this video. Uh, they're kind of just random, right? They don't really have a purpose. They're more of just a way of adding some random uh, scaffolding and metal structures and stuff in your image. And this being an industrial area would have a ton. So we could throw in some cranes and stuff. Maybe, maybe something like this bad boy. I'm thinking. Maybe. Possibly. Something like that. To break up the perspective a little bit more. Maybe up here. Maybe on the other side. Whoops. Like that. Maybe turn it upside down. That's not upside down. That's upside down. And then flip it again because it's upside down. Flatten it. Mm. I think this might look okay if we put it in the background. But the perspective is way off. Yeah, we'll leave. We'll take that out. That can go burn in a fire. It's fine. Let's try something else. Let's do something like this. Sexy beast. Yeah, that's looking kind of cool. Uh, I don't know if we want it taking up so much of the image. Or if we want it like that. I think that looks cool, but not in front of the cement structure. I think it would be cooler if it was behind everything. And smaller. So like here. Here, maybe. Something like that. So we'll just leave it on normal. Uh, take the levels, bring them down to make them darker so it kind of stands out better but then take the blacks and raise it up to fade it back out into the background. And then we'll go ahead and just take this cement uh, pillar structure tunnel thing that we have here and just lasso what we don't want the crane sticking through. So there and here. that and then over here and our pipe we want to leave our pipe sticking out and then of course get rid of that on the bottom right corner we can probably just fade it out we don't really have to completely delete it so something like that and then just delete all of that we don't need any, any of that garbage. There we go. Oh, it's the pipe. Forgot the pipe. There we go. So then we have this kind of construction thing coming in. It's kind of crane, but I don't like where it was. I think this looks cooler, having it hanging out in the view like that. Maybe there. So let's try that instead. Let's do this. Select the concrete. That. It's pretty much all of that. And then we don't want this. We don't want that. We don't want any of that. That. There we go. And then there. And then, of course, right there. Having the wire stick through kind of adds a bit of a depth, so I think I might leave that. And then. We can just kind of rough this back in. Like that. There we go. And then here too. It's kind of like 
that dealio. Scaffolding though, so it would be a bit like that. There we go. And a hard line follows here. Oops. There. And this needs to be fixed perspective wise. There we go. Neato. So now we got some kind of construction equipment, you know, going on here. Which makes sense story wise too, narrative wise, because that means that we have something that the character not in this scene, but in like the actual movie or game or something, the character could actually be jumping off of this and doing that classic like no and then grab it, swing across the gap, you know, get away, right? Uh so that could work. But let's uh let's try some content aware on these dark spots here. Let's see what it makes. We don't want it to completely get rid of the dark spot. We just want it to blend in more. That's better. It's blurry, but you know, it fits. And then with all of this equipped, we could try content wearing here and see what it does. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Because that adds this kind of depth with the city and stuff. And it matches up here as well. I don't like these duplicate tops. So we'll get rid of that. But this looks cool. I like this. Uh, yeah, sure things. Uh, I think... Uh, my art station is not in the description of this video. Yeah, let me give you the link to my art station where I usually post everything. Also got, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, pfft, whatever, you, you name it. There you go. That's the link to my art station where that's like the main place that I post everything because since it's not LinkedIn, I can post crap there. LinkedIn, I try to just focus on posting like the best stuff because LinkedIn is all professional and business, you know, but art stations kind of people see your work on there. It doesn't necessarily have to be your best work. It's more of just like a social profile, right? So, you know, it's like an extended portfolio. My portfolio only has like 10 pieces in it, but the art station has like a billion. Yeah, so that's working. I think the color on this construction needs a change. So we will go ahead and fix that real quick. Which is super easy to do. All we have to do is just grab some of the surrounding color, put on like a low opacity, and kind of just softly put that in there as a way to push it back some more. There we go. This pink and uh, orange brown kind of tones and stuff are kind of looking, they're working pretty cool, I like it. Something like that works. There we go. Sweet. Cool. Cool. All right, so we do need to fix the values of these new buildings that we've made, which is really easy to do. Uh, you could just rough in like a outline of what they are and where they are and kind of just do like flat squares and then perspective would be kind of like a little bit like that. Not too much, but a little bit. Oops. So then I would go like this. And then leave like a line. There we go. That's cool. Same thing there. Do it here, get the roof. You'll see I'm not zooming in to fix this, but that's because, uh, one, it takes effort. <laughs> but, <laughs> but then two, uh, it's because if you stay zoomed out like this, even though you're not getting perfect masking, it does kind of help you see 
better of the general feeling of everything. So it just makes more sense for me to stay zoomed out. There we go. Yeah. So then we'll do that Fang Zoo technique that I was talking about, where he likes to put a, a, like a haze behind everything. But we're going to do screen. And 30% is fine. We're going to take some of this general color back here, like this faded pink and orange and green and stuff like that. Kind of just push this back a little bit not a whole bunch but just enough to add like a layer of distance between these buildings and the background a little more maybe so like that yeah so in your brain even though this looks nothing like a building in your brain you see that there is like this depth there so let's go ahead and do some more in the background. Uh, these can just be flat. You don't have to worry about perspective really on these. And we'll just have some very generic building stuff here. And then do something like that or something closer to like that maybe. Yeah, it looks better. And then we'll control shift I and do something on, on the bottom a little bit just to help separate the back from the front even more. Yeah, see that's working. That's looking sweet, dude. Cool. So, uh, the image is kind of flat as far as values. I know there's highlights and shadows, but as far as how bright those highlights are, they're not really. So like if you select it, it's at 98 on the super bright highlights, but these are 89% so we could brighten it even more and we will we're gonna we're gonna do all that at the end simply because it's just easier once you get everything else rendered out to add lighting on top of it so before and after just check where we're going here I don't like this line so I think we're gonna content wear that line out something like that better maybe like this yeah. that's fine get rid of that line yeah that's looking okay so we need to add our character running and something chasing him maybe I'm not sure if we would need something chasing him it could just be a action scene where maybe in a game like mirror's edge or something you're running across this beam or we're just designing a level in the game where you just happen to be running across this beam but i think it might be more interesting if we have something chasing him what would be chasing him i haven't the slightest idea so we're going to figure that out uh let me go grab some people that I found that were running. It's a good way to put them in. Let's see. Mad paint. Action scene. Bring that back out. Um, let's see. We got some motorcycle stuff, which would be kind of cool, but I don't think it would be fitting to the theme that we're going for. I think this would work as far as putting a person in. Let's put it over. There we go. So, not these close ones, because the close ones are cut off. And, like, the feet are cut off and stuff like that. And then trying to mask this out would be a problem. But perspective-wise, this person right here and this person right here would, would fit perfectly. So, I think we're going to try them. They're still blurry because they're out of focus just because of the way the focal lens is. Or the focal length is on the lens. But they are still human shape they're not so blurred out that you can't tell and if we mask them out we can actually create our fake little person based on their outline and just because i'm masking out a female doesn't have to be a female character uh once we put clothes on them and put them in the scene and stuff you can make them to be whatever you want and this is of course only if it's like a human person character, if it's like some kind of robot with six legs or whatever, you could probably start with a person base 
and then just uh, actually I think this is the one we're gonna go with and then just add you know robot legs on top of it or whatever but I think this is the way this is the way speaking of which I haven't watched episode 2 yet of Mandalorian you guys are taking up my time so it's your fault <laughs> but uh, Mandalorian episode 1 was sick I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anything about it in case there are other people that haven't seen it yet but it's absolutely worth it. So let's, uh, I don't know how big, I don't know how big the character should be. Maybe like that. Or we could have them bigger and up here. Now I think composition wise would be better here. But for scale of the place, I think she should be a little bit tinier. Bring the levels down. And then bring the shadows up. And it'll create this kind of silhouette character. Like there. And then just bring the levels up or down however you feel like it. I'm going to make her a bit brighter on the levels simply because she's in the highlight. Something like that. Okay. Perspective wise, she's looking good. Scale wise, this might actually be, need to be smaller. Yeah, that's fine. So then transparency lock, and we'll start adding some colors to her. First we'll brighten her up on the top there, which I just use screen. You can use color dodge, screen, you know, whatever you want to do. And then we need to add some kind of outfit design to her. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, but just something to help her stand out. So if we kind of darken her legs a little bit more. So that way she's got like this kind of idea. Let's give her um let's give her some orange. That'll help her stand out, you know. Uh actually, since everything else is orange, the main character could be a different color. So if we make her cliche a bit of red, right? Maybe she's got like a red or a pinkish kind of jacket thing on. Uh and then cyberpunk wise. I've seen this I don't know what you would call them. I, I've seen these people with pants that are like not pants. Uh, let me see. Uh, so boy, uh, I don't even know how to search it, but it's like one leg has pants. Oh, uh, what's her face on Valorant? Um, oh boy, Reyna. Reyna on Valorant has these pants that I've seen other people wearing. That I how do you put them on? <laughs> like it doesn't make any sense. Uh, so let me get this picture going here. Open image and new tab. Thank you. So this this chick right from Valorant. If you played Valorant, you know that she's annoying as crap to go against because she can just keep healing herself. But besides talking about the game's balance, her pants don't make any sense. She has she has like this suit that I like I, I just don't get it like <laughs> do you just put is it like putting on pants where one leg doesn't have anything and then she puts on this weird very long sock kind of deal because there's this gap right here between her what is that mid thigh and her crotch area and her hip there's just this gap so it's not attached at all, you know? So that, that means this whole bottom piece is separate. But then if you look at it, she's got this weird, uh, kind of like a, I don't know, bandage or cape belt situation going on here. And if this is holding these two pieces together, then that means when she goes to put on her pants, <laughs> she has to put the left leg in first, and then this right leg is just dangling all over the place, and she has to try to get her foot through here all the way down. And and like I've seen people in cosplay and stuff, not even of her, but just other people wearing pants like that. How do you put them on? Like it just doesn't. <laughs> I can't figure it out. It doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, I mean, you know, maybe some people know. I don't know. But either way that may be what she, this character is wearing because it does look very futuristic I'm, I'm with you on that it does look like some kind of future pants design but it just like physically doesn't make any sense to me and I can't figure it out 
uh, and that's probably just my own shortcomings. So let's let's just give her a little bit of this like red color, uh, just to help her stand out a bit. And then we could also throw in some of the surrounding orange as like a undershirt dealio that she's got going on here. So about here or so. Actually, maybe she's got like orange on her shoulder, like a like a patch, you know. And then let's keep this red going around her hip. Bring the jacket in some more. And again, I'm just keeping this kind of very zoomed out and rough, just because it's the it's the way I like to live my life, you know. So let's leave that like that. And then we'll go ahead and add some highlight on her arms and her collar. Because she is in the dead highlight of this pipe or whatever the structure is. So we can just add some highlight to even help her stand out some more. Uh, get rid of the transparency lock so I can add some highlight on her hip here. There we go. And then maybe, honestly, I just leave it like that. To be fair, I would just send that into a client as like a rough idea of what's going on. Because you don't really need to focus on her face because it's just you're focused on the scene. You're not really focused on her design. If you were focused on her design, then you would have like a character sheet, you know, with the whatever she's standing. She's got everything going on, you know. Stuff like that. It looks like a robot. That's not what I'm going for. Something character-wise would be something closer to like this. And then, you know, have her stance, whatever else. So that would be, but then, you know, huge and then different angles or whatever for the character design. That would be more what, then you'd have to figure out what she's wearing. But right now we're kind of just focused on the color that she's wearing and the general idea of what she's doing. Let's have this come around her chest, like that, and then I don't like her being solid reddish pink like that. I do want some orange in there, so we can do that fairly easily if we just kind of add like a bit of a accent, you know, when it comes to orange. We could probably use it on her jacket. that maybe she's got gloves maybe she's got orange gloves on and then orange boots right like that yeah looking fine it's looking neat her hair is the same color as a cement highlight which is not right uh, because obviously her hair is not cement so let's give her something probably darker Maybe not darker, maybe something like that. And then add some color to it, a little brighter. Nah, we'll do this color. Is it like a off brown? Yeah, that's better. It's like an off brown but then make it super bright since she's right in the highlight. And just kind of highlight around her. That's a little flat. It looks fine. Uh, I will say it looks like she's wearing a helmet, which is weird. Don't want that. Let's do something like that. Yeah, so now we got a character just freaking sprinting down this pipe. Uh, we do need to add a shadow be uh, beneath her, which is fine. That's super easy to do. You can either try to make it match the perspective and have like this perfect cast shadow on her, or you can just do it yourself as like a rough shadow. So lighting wise, if the light is coming like that, right, then that means her shadow is going to cast that way. It's going to be like that. 
It's going to follow the same direction. Like there-ish. So we'll take this nearby shadow color. Not the dark. We don't want the super dark. We'll just get the nearby shadow and just kind of rough that in there. That she's got a shadow. Like that. Super easy. Nothing you have to worry about too much. Because the shadow and details and stuff like that do help an image stand out more if you're looking for like a fine art image but as far as designing a scene like this it's not necessary at first later on your client or company whoever you're working for would be like that's great everything's great we just need you to clean it up then you can go ahead and clean it up and like i said before cleaning up just takes no brain power it's more of just like going around making stuff pretty which you can just shut your brain off for all right, so we got this character. She's doing her thing. What is chasing her? I thought, boy, I don't know, man. I thought uh, she would have something kind of flying after her. So I can't, I found some few, or a few like uh, flying military vehicles of some sort, and I thought I'd create like a cyberpunk vehicle out of them. So we could try something like this thing, which scale-wise would be like, Here-ish, something like that. Uh, but let's go ahead and mask it out. Actually, if we make it dark, we might not have to mask it out. Yeah, we don't have to. Cool, because the clouds behind it are light, so putting it on darker color just kind of gets rid of the clouds. And then we can just do like that, really darken it up, help it stand out more, and then take lasso tool and just roughly get rid of the cloud areas that are bothering our image that and here Oops. every time I see a military vehicle like this I always think of the game SOCOM Confrontation uh, which you know SOCOM series is great it's an absolutely great series but SOCOM Confrontation always stands out to me because it was well I mean one of the newest ones you know it was like one of the newest SOCOM so it's easier to remember but also it had this weird multiplayer aspect to it that was fun, but it was also really funny because they added this feature in multiplayer where uh, if you spoke in your microphone and anybody not on your team was nearby, it would speak like they could hear you, right? So let's say you were talking to your friend next to each other, like, I'm watching the right, and your friend's like, I'm watching the left. If an enemy was near you, they would actually hear your comms. They would hear you talking to each other, and it would it would echo through the wall or the uh, environment a little bit, so it felt like you were hearing somebody in a distance talking. Uh, and it was really funny because I would use that to trick enemies all the time. I would just say something wrong. I'd be like, "Yo, come up in this tower and help me out," and then somebody would come up in the tower to either one think that it was a teammate talking to them but it was me or two uh they would be like i'm gonna go up there and surprise them because i heard him talking and then i would just be standing there staring at the stairway waiting for them to come up <laughs> so every time i see a military vehicle like this i always just think of socom confrontation and how ridiculous that multiplayer was uh all right so let's adjust the values a little bit it's a little too dark kind of lighten it up a little bit more being transparent like this is totally fine it just adds this kind of fake reflection of the world around so it's not a big deal we do want to fix the perspective a bit like probably that well that makes this engine huge we'll leave it like this but we are we do need to design a cyberpunk vehicle right this is not a normal world so we want to figure out some kind of cyberpunky design. And I'm trying to, I'm just gonna try a couple things here. Not sure which ones work, but we're gonna do it anyways. So something like that, maybe. And this has no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. Uh, I'm mainly just coming up with some kind of cool idea based on the asset itself not really any kind of 
planning ahead of it. I'm more of just moving pieces, figuring out what looks cool, what doesn't. Uh, so let's move that down a little bit more. Rotate it, maybe. And then take the blade, make it vertical. So like that. Uh, nah. I think uh, I think it's fine with the blades going out like they were, but we don't want this spoiler thing. Get rid of, get rid of that. We don't have to worry about practicality here. We're just designing something cool. I don't like how long it is. Flying in this tunnel like this would be weird. So let's shorten it a little bit like that, and then same thing here. Actually. Fix that first. There we go. Then get rid of this. Scrap that. Boom. Make this shorter. Not by a margin that I actually know. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Because it's all about speed. Something like that. Right there. And then this one. there, take the blades, maybe put them on the bottom, let's try that, I like that, so let's do, let's do something like that on this side, where we just take this blade and we flip it upside down, and then this right here is on accident, because that's actually part of the background, that little black line right there. But it does create this cool vertical design to the actual element itself. And I like that. So let's kind of just bring that in a little bit. Just like a top piece, which could be like a landing gear, you know? Maybe the landing gear doesn't go up. It could be uh, another blade itself, if we just put like a tip here. And then kind of blade it up like that. But I think I think a landing gear would make more sense. Something like something cool but rough because we're not taking too much time on this here. Something like that. There we go. And then obviously it wouldn't just fly from this. We would probably have another blade up here in the top like that let's put it in yeah we'll, we'll fix that in a second let me go ahead and save this for play uh <laughs> photoshop crashes there we go so something like that maybe something a little bit off kilter instead of perfectly straight like that and then same thing on this side a little bit longer It's looking kind of cool. I don't like the tangent that it had. What I was talking about earlier is this hanging piece here. It's creating like a weird tangent. So what we can do is move it a bit like here and then fix that piece. Now that vertically it's not there anymore. Cool. Cool. This is looking legit. I'm digging it. So then we'll go ahead and just fill this little bit in here. It's on darker color at the moment, so it's a little bit transparent, which is fine. Like I said, the reflections and stuff, but you don't want it to be completely transparent in certain spots. You want it to have some kind of uh, value to it. And since this is on darker color, if you just pick a darker value, it'll show up. There we go, it'll darken the window. 
a little bit better. And then, of course, the window could be a bit more cybery. So if we just kind of make it like that, which would mean very unnecessary designs. But we are in an industrial area, so maybe the design is necessary. Maybe the design has some kind of purpose to it. And this being the military, they would have R&D out the wazoo anyways. So let's fix that. Can I just rough this in like that and then add some lighting on the edges here. Cool. Uh, we can also try content aware in just different spots and see if it comes up with a cool design that we didn't think of ourselves. <laughs> um, sort of. I kind of like this bottom piece being wider like that. So we might try that on both sides like that to give it just more beefiness you know something more intimidating because the character is being chased by it landing gear probably wouldn't be seen since it's flying uh, the landing gear on the bottom is probably fine because it just is part of the entire propeller system if the helicopter wanted to go mock speed then it could or like traveling speed then of course the propellers could come down and then become like in the front you know but as far as landing gear, I think it's okay being on the bottom right like this because it might have just taken off chasing the character. So it doesn't want to get to landing speed. Also with all these structures and everything around, it doesn't want to crash. Yeah. I think perspective wise, we need to flip it. Something like that. So it's actually coming after the character. Maybe lower it, yeah, that's fine. Then, uh, go underneath it. Fix this transparency a little bit more by just adding some color underneath it. Fix the front, fix the sides. Like that, it's all good. There we go. Sweet, dude. Yeah, so it's something that's becoming a thing, right? And then, of course, if this design, if you send it to a client, they're like, it sucks, then you could always just, you know, redo the design. Uh, doing this, if they were focused on the design of the vehicle, then you would have, you would, it would probably be a lot easier if you just did a vehicle sheet and then just come up with a bunch of different thumbnails and then work with the client on which ones are the right one. And then you would know what kind of vehicle and what it looks like in this scene. But as far as very early stages of designing something if you don't have a vehicle design sheet to work off of and the client doesn't want uh and the client doesn't really need an emphasis on the exact design of the vehicle then you know something like this would work totally fine just as long as it fits the same mood kind of thing like uh for example near automata has a bunch of concept art that I have as wallpapers because it's just really cool. But the game itself, the environments in the game and everything actually came out drastically different than the concept art itself. Uh, so, like for example, there's a desert one in here somewhere. Where frog though? Maybe if I follow the chain of links from here, here, here. Nope. All right. Well, then we'll just go with this one then. So this this image right here this one well that's not what I wanted open image there we go so this image right here I really like near automata concept art because it, it shows the exact reasoning behind my style 
of it doesn't freaking matter how detailed it is and how rendered it is. It, the, what matters is that the idea is there, right? If you're if you're worried about how clean everything is and stuff, it's no longer about concept art. It's more about the illustration, uh, or about you know fine art and selling it for however much money you feel like you you want to sell it for. But this near automata concept art, this is what concept art looks like. This is what in house you know, before they show anybody in the world what it looks like. Uh, so his style is to just render and have the general idea there, but he doesn't give a flying crap about actually making it seem like he took any time on it at all. Because, <laughs> like, you can see every brushstroke. You can see uh, the photo that he bashed in there. You can see some edges are still there, like right here. And this tree, there's a bit of an edge from the photo bashing left over that he probably just skimmed over because he didn't see it or he doesn't care enough to take right to, you know, delete it. So here's the thing, though, is that in the game, it doesn't look like this at all. In the game, uh, there's no bridge like this that's broken. And it looks like San Francisco kind of bridge that leads to the factory in the game. In the game, the factory entrance uh, there is like a factory boss fight that has like a broken bridge, but it doesn't look like this bridge at all. So the design of the area tr changed completely from this to what the level designer ch decided, what the lighting artist decided, art director, you know, a whole team. It goes through so many different hands that things are going to change. So he didn't really need to focus on the design of the bridge and the design of the factory because he didn't really design the factory. The factory is kind of just guesswork right he designed the idea of the area and then they went afterwards and refined everything so uh as far as taking your time and figuring out what this kind of attack ship thing is designed exactly like it doesn't really matter for client work you can kind of just leave it it doesn't it's fine nobody really cares that much you know so yeah we'll leave it like that that's fine and let's add some color to it. It's too, uh, it's too blech right now. I would say something cool. Something to help it stand out as the villain of the scene since it's being chased. Or since it's chasing our hero, it's got to be something villainy. I think yellow might work. Maybe. I have this orange thing down here. This, like, support chopper that they use and like looks like uh, something that carries cargo if we use this to add some color to it that might work pin lights probably too much but we'll try it anyways so like that'll add some red to it uh, we'll change perspective on it transform perspective fit the scene a little bit better it's not going to be perfect, but it'll work. And then probably move this. That right there can just content where to get rid of those words. And then just move this section over. Right there. And then delete that bit. And then go ahead and select everything that's not this red. Like that. Select inverse, delete, boom. Now we got this red going on here, so it helps stand out as it's a character. You know, obviously the main character is in the bright hot spot, and she has some red mixed in, but she's not, uh, she's not lit yet, fam. <laughs> we just haven't like actually lit her. So we'll take that, flip it, duplicate it, and see if we can't symmetrical this design here. Get some symmetry going like that we don't need all of that and then right here we could probably get rid of some of that yeah I'm digging it merge those two try darker color and lighter color instead of pin light but I think pin lights the way to go and then just fix the contrast Doo -doo. so just grab the midtones you know, the usual rigmarole. There we go. 
get rid of this red that's sticking out in front of the windows. And then we'll go ahead and grab this red, which is this. Yep. Grab that red, go over it, and we'll start kind of just painting in a bit of a design here. So, something like that, maybe. And then this can have like that kind of idea. But then this needs to be a bit like that. Then we can bring some of that red, throw it in here and here. And then maybe we could also, instead of it just being red only, we could mix some of the orange in as well. So we could have like something like that. But up here maybe. Like that kind of thing. And then maybe here as well. So it's orange and red. Orange with like a red outline, maybe? It's looking cool. I dig it. Yeah, something like that. Uh, not so bright. It's going to darken it a bit because it's like a shadow area. Cool. Sweet. I'm digging it. The red needs to be calmed down a little bit. You know, it's getting out of hand. So we're kind of just going to lightly delete some of it or, you know, erase over it a little bit. Just kind of fade it back out because it's getting a little bit too much. And actually, we can transparency lock and then draw or paint some orange in there. If we can get the right color going here. that ends up being red that's like a yellowish green pen lights hard to tell what's gonna be orange because they like to weird they like to mix up your colors a bit uh, there we go got it all right so if we take this and just roughly kind of just go over it a little bit. Just add a little bit of orange tint to everything, you know? Something like that. There we go. Yeah. So now, as far as the design of it, I think we're okay. I think we just need to light it to match the environment which means it would have rim light behind it because of the shadows and stuff. And then, of course, light up the character and mm, do some color editing and maybe... And then, of course, do some light adjustment and add some haze to the ship to kind of push it behind the character a little bit more. But, yeah, after that, I think we're done. So let's get to it, bro. Let's do it. Are we always, we're always preparing. Just go. We watched uh, Spaceballs again recently, so that movie is fresh in my mind again. When he runs through the ship and he's out of breath, and he's just like, this ship is too long. <laughs> so like that, maybe? Maybe like this. That looks cool. And then we can do like uh, some industrial style piping maybe or you know like wires and whatnot sticking out so if we just do like that grab some of this blacker color just kind of rough that in there we go and then do the same actually could take some of that orange and put it on the tip of the blades it won't show up too well, but it will be enough to add like a little bit of importance to the blades. Ah, it's 
because it's darker color. That's that's why. There we go. So something like that. And then here. And then up here. Like that. Maybe. Something like that. Or is that too much? I think that might be too much orange with the orange environment and everything. I think if we just do like maybe at the very tips just to help it separate a little bit more. I think that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So let us Probably before we make a uh, before we make a checkpoint, you know, where we merge everything and duplicate. Let's go ahead and take this background behind it and just add a layer of depth behind the actual villain ship attack thing because we don't want it to be so dark and we want it to bring out a little bit more of the background. So let's grab actually some of the sunlight behind it. A bit like that. Just just a smidgen, not too much. Yeah, something like that. That works. So then, you know, before and after, it kind of just helps it stand out some more. Right? So now we can make our uh, duplicate checkpoints. There we go. And we'll go ahead and actually before we even do that, we still have the layer right here. Let's take this and kind of push it a little bit. So probably not 30%. We're going to do a little bit, not too much to just kind of get rid of that solid black levels that it has here. Just kind of push it a little bit back. All the way on every dark spot. Like that. That's better. Cool. Now we can duplicate and make a uh, checkpoint. Sweet. Samsung Pay, leave me alone. Okay. So. This can be roughly selected now that we have some kind of idea of where everything is, you know? Which is always super boring to do, but it works. There we go. And it doesn't have to be a perfect selection because what we're going to do is we're going to use a selection on the left side mostly to help fix the fact that you can't really see the left side of it. So let's do it like that. There. Something like there. Have the blade. And then the landing gear, weird blade thing that's right behind the character about to chop her head off go. Yep. Something like this. Maybe more there. And then I need to flatten that blade out. There we go. Yeah, that'll work. Something like that. All right. So then that, that'll just let us uh, go behind it and kind of just do what we did with the screen, you know, kind of push it back a little bit, but this will help bring this side forward so that way we can see it easier. Yeah, a bit like that. That's fine. Maybe a little bit more here so we can get more silhouette of this thing. So we'll darken this side, which means midtones. Darken it. Like that. Sweet. Cool. 
cool. So then we have this contrast between him and the villain. I think it might be cooler if the windows had a different color to them. So first off, perspective wise, they would end up like that. Like that ish. Let's do like a green, like a like that kind of off blue green, you know? How's it going? Hope you're enjoying the rambles. Alright, so let's set it to normal. Something like that, but like a more green to it. Yeah, that kind of thing. And what we'll do is we'll just softly bring that in. Like there or so. Actually, let's do it on a separate layer. Let's do it like that. And then just set it to color dodge. Or lighter color? Pin light? We'll do a lighter color. Bring down the levels on it because it's too bright. So like that. And then fix the fact that it's sticking out a little bit weirdy. Like that kind of thing. And then go ahead and bump up the highlights on it to make it stand out. A little bit more. There we go. Sweet. Sweet. Now I think we can start adding some like actual light to the image. Right now everything's kind of flat-ish. You know, there's implied light, but it's not actually lit. So we can go ahead and do that. Uh, the best way to do that is on one layer. I mean, the easiest way, not the best way, but the easiest way is on one layer bump up some highlights here because it's really solid light beam coming in on the background here. Something like that. You gotta be careful when using highlights when you're bumping up the highlights because of the fact that it can really blast out your image and you don't want your values super blasted out. Okay. So then we're gonna bump up where the character is Highlights, highlights, there we go. Bump her up a little bit. Her feet area, probably in the mid-tones. Like that. Do the same thing on each little piece down there. And then here as well. Something like that. Looking at the thumbnail, we're looking okay. There is a bit of a value problem behind her because the attack ship is too dark. So it's kind of take the shadows. Whoops, shadows. Just kind of bump, lighten that up a little bit. Same thing down here. You bump up the shadows, it kind of just helps push everything back depth wise. We do want to probably darken this area here to kind of just add a bit of a contrast with how bright it is up here. The tones there, the tones. Okay. And then before and after just to see what the difference looks like. You can see that the light is really focused on the character now instead of uh, you know everywhere else, right? So the question is uh, what do we do now? We have this little piece that I don't like anymore. It is overstayed its welcome. There we go, it's gone. We can add, get rid of that. We can do uh, like a blur effect, you know, like a motion blur kind of thing. Actually, I think this big piece could probably be smaller. No, let's just get rid of the big piece. And then, whoops, 100. And then take this one, and bring it down like that. And kind of just have our own little fake, little 
construction stuff here. So it doesn't take up so much of attention. Like that. Then we'll bring in some wires. Because we have all these little wires hanging down here. It would be cool if they were kind of just interconnected with each other. It also helps sell the fact that this place is gross, you know, and wires are just hanging everywhere and it's cheap and people don't like to live here. This isn't like a good place to live. So let's do that real quick. Just a few here and there, you know, something to add like some interesting elements. like that and then maybe some hanging down here but it wouldn't be so dark it would be probably here ish yeah something like that so we'll bring those in now what we need to do is we need to have some kind of foreground element because right now we're losing depth I mean we have depth obviously but there's nothing in the front like this front left here there's nothing interesting there which is a lot of negative space. So let's try, uh, whoops. Let's try throwing something in there. Let's do, um, let's do some, something, just something, right? <laughs> Doesn't have to be anything crazy, just something to add some kind of detail in that spot. What it would be, though, couldn't tell you. We're just going to figure it out. Could try one of these things. I'm thinking something like these beams. Maybe like this one. Like this beam right here. But do we want it vertical? Yeah, I think vertical works. So we'll put it like because there's these two wires coming out of it, right? So we'll make it smaller so it's not so ridiculous. Put it like there. Just the levels on it. Super dark. Like that. But it's in the foreground, so the lens would not have it in focus. So we're just gonna, we don't really want it in focus, right? Thanks, Ian. So uh, we want it in, out of focus, but not so bad that it's pointless, you know? Could try it here, maybe bigger, like that or something. Nah, I like, I like it on this. Actually, maybe make it super huge. We could have it like that and it kind of frames the character a little bit uh i got the i got the beams from just some pack that i found <laughs> so long ago i couldn't even uh tell you exactly you know it was from a very long time ago and uh i'll try to you know i'll try to find it and send you a message on where it was but Let's go ahead and continue figuring out what we got going on here. Let me type something real quick. All right, so let us commence. I like this out of focus, but it does take a lot of attention away. So question is, where does it go, right? One up top. Up top's kind of cool. Kind of like it. Like there ish. But then we still run into the problem at the bottom left, have nothing. So maybe like that. That kind of looks cool. Um, let's see. So 
Something like that, I think. We'll take the second wire and we'll just bring it closer to the other one. Maybe even interlap. Overlap. Something like... Something like that, maybe? Yeah, it kind of adds like a frame, you know? It's not actually a frame, but it does add this kind of framing where now the left side is dark, so we're looking cl more towards this side of the image. But it might actually be even cooler if we bring in another piece on the right side and have this kind of fake symmetry, well, almost symmetrical framing. So that way the focus is really on the character. Um, but what do we use? That's always the freaking question. Could try, could try this. Cause this has this kind of construction scaffolding feel to it. Just put it like here, maybe like that. I don't like this tangent here, so we're going to move that. Something like that. And then, again, blur it out, because it's not the focus. We don't want it to be. Not that blurred, though. It's got to have some kind of structure to it. Something like that. I'm not liking how straight this framing is, so we may uh, just rotate it. Let's see. Ooh, that. I like that. So let's uh let's flip that and put that on that side. Like that. There we go. So now we just got this beam coming across. And it doesn't really add anything new to the image, but it does kind of break up the uh the framing of everything that really helps sell that there's just a lot of crap in this place, you know, there's like a lot of there's a lot of stuff in the way, I guess would be the better way to say it. And then, of course, it helps frame. It's doing like this. <laughs> it's doing like this. And it's framing the character in the dead center, which is cool. Uh, this bottom right now needs something. I don't think we're going to do a foreground element like this. I think it's going to be uh, just like something roughed in here. Are we content aware? Let's see what it makes. Because the more stuff we add into this one layer, the cooler it gets. Yeah, I mean, that's cool. It's not city depth, but it does have this kind of construction-y feel to it. Maybe here. Something like that, maybe. Yeah, this is cool. I like these little bits of orange that it's pulling in. And then this, like, obviously construction-y scaffolding feel to it. Now it's just copying the character. We don't want that. What are we, dweebs? No, nope. let's do here. Maybe just here. So, yeah. So, before and after, uh, we have a different bottom piece now that still gives us this kind of construction feel to it without completely overpowering the composition. That piece being a duplicate of the one above it needs to go, but everything else is fine. And that is just break up some of the, some of the samey, same sames. There we go. Sweet, and then uh, also we can, I just saw this little beam here we can kind of do this thing and then maybe like that kind of thing like that and yep all right and then we'll go ahead and do screen 30% you know ish doesn't matter it just depends on how strong you are i guess <laughs> and we'll uh we'll push this little 
section right here in the back back a little bit and it should create this effect that there's a beam going across these kind of structures and then darken this side a little bit more like that ish and then we can brighten up the bottom of it like there which is you know very Fang Zhu like I told you before he does that often where he does this kind of masking dark and light to create shapes and it works but the way I do it I just kind of like to imply subtly that it's there I don't like to just blast out a bright value um, so there's now we have this kind of structure down at the bottom right compared to this fake city we have this kind of like bridge kind of idea right here that's kind of cool and I think actually we could try content wearing across like this and see if it duplicates the path it does not so it's okay we'll just leave it like that that's fine so I do want to fix the lighting on ship boy here which means that we'll have to oh actually uh, we should fix these two because right now they're in the foreground which is totally fine we want them dark right but we want to change the colors of them because right now it's very blue uh, so we can just go to color balance and change the shadows to like a bit of a red just a slight bit of like a red and green situation and then mix in some yellows for the highlights and then we can take uh, our soft brush grab some of this orange and maybe put some lines on it and make a construction nah, nah it's, it's bringing too much detail to it we don't want to focus on that too much alright so let's fix the uh, the lighting right here in the ship because right here it kinda just blends into the background value wise you know not not shape wise obviously but value wise that right there needs to be brighter like that Whoops. Let's fix that there we go and then just kind of push that open a little bit yeah that's better it looks kind of dumb you know design wise it's just very smooth so we're going to break it up and add some kind of coolness to it, the cool factor that I always talk about. Something, something intimidating because it is a villain, but something still fitting the theme, you know. That's fine. I think maybe we could throw in some uh, jet intakes on the side here, where it's like that and like that yep and then we'll emphasize this this uh, plane you know this physical plane there and then we can do like some little intake valve whatever you call them the, the you have like an intake right where the engine is and there are lines in the engine that help the engine breathe, you know, because engines go off of oxygen. I don't know the name of them, <laughs> but we're going to put those in there. Okay. Cool. Bring that orange back on the fins. Maybe put some orange on the bottoms here. Cool. Now, we're going to take probably 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 like this section here. 
and see what happens if we put some motion blur. Not a whole lot, and definitely not at 90 degrees. It would have to follow the perspective. So like that, I just do a little. But no, since they're in focus, I think it works fine like that. What we can do is we can, uh, here's a little trick, right? So duplicate the layer, and on one layer, put the motion. So blur, uh, motion blur, right? And go about the perspective that we're looking for, something, something there-ish. You're not going to see it because there's a layer above it. So like that, right? But then if we take, uh, we put that above, and then we take the layer of blur and just lightly erase the parts that we don't want blurred, then that's a good way to deal with the fact that we only have one layer to work with, right? And it still adds this kind of intensity and movement to the scene, but we don't want it so blurred out. You know, we want to kind of bring in some of that detail back. So like that. So then what ends up happening is now we have this kind of drastic fake, you know, because it's all fake, this kind of like fake movement to the image, even though all we've done is just blur the parts that weren't the focus. So it makes it seem like something's happening, you know, it's like, it's action, right? <laughs> so... That's just, you know, that's just an idea. Uh, let's try... Let's try that fish fin that I was talking about. I think that might actually look pretty cool if we attach it to the attack ship. Um, or even just like a small scarf on the character or something that's blowing in the wind. As she's running. So just to emphasize that there is movement, right? Uh, this one. So... If we just take this fin, nothing else, just this bit. Delete everything else. Probably have to shrink it, then delete everything else. Do 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 do. Like that. There we go. Set it to probably pin light. Yeah. And. Set it to the motion that's going on, which would be the other direction. And then perspective. Would be more like that kind of thing. Right? And we can either give her like a little, little cape thing that's blowing around, or we can put it on the ship as like a... As like a way of whatever their team is, you know? Like it's like kind of like a flag of their ship kind of thing but I don't know if it would look good on the ship I know it'll look fine on her if we just do it like that right and then perspective like really exaggerate it make it look like she's flying like she's booking it so it'd be something like that She's got like a little scarf thing flowing here. But I don't think it's enough. I think it's cool. But I don't think it's enough of what we're looking for. So what what if we just make our own little swoosh like that? And then have it kind of do like that kind of thing? And then fill it in. It's on a separate layer, yep. So then we're essentially adding the same colors that everything else has in here to help her fit in this world a little bit better. It's orange. Come on, there we go. Make it kind of bright, brighter than that. And brighten it here and then Maybe some here, and then we'll take the lighter colors and kind of just bring them in. Like that. 
And then probably shrink it. It's too much of an attention. Eh. I don't know. I don't think I like it. It was a try, you know? Kind of like a journey where the game journey, where he has like uh, this big old cape scarf thing that gets bigger, that gives you, the more you play the game, the bigger it gets, stuff like that. So I was picturing that kind of flowing, but eh, not feeling it, doesn't fit the idea, right? So let's add some rim light to this ship. Uh, the rim light wouldn't, I mean, you know, it's the ship being reflective, the rim light would be somewhat of the same color, but uh, depending on the paint, depending on like what color the paint is of that area, the lighting is going to just be that paint with a brighter tone to it. Uh, so let's go ahead and just do some very, very generic, or not generic, but basic uh, rim lighting. And then a little bit here. And you don't want just like a straight outline of the ship because that will flatten the ship and it'll make it feel like instead of it feeling like rim light it'll feel like the ship has been like a cartoon illustrated where it's inked right so you kind of just want to throw rim light where the main direction of the light is coming from but then uh you don't want to get both sides even though it may actually have it in real life with this kind of uh with this kind of like impressionistic view of a rim light you kind of are just faking it of course as always it's what we do kind of thing so like that maybe throw some here kind of break it up right here i don't like how solid that is there we go yeah it's looking cool so then we'll uh fix the nose up a bit because this red doesn't make any sense at the moment like that I don't know if we now nah, we want that we'll do like uh, do that kind of thing like geometric there we go emphasize that with a bit of a dark edge we go yeah and then the character could use a bit of a shadow on our left side so we can kind of just kind of darken that a little bit just a smidge Is it looking okay? So then uh, maybe we might be able to content aware this back here to add some differences to it. Probably not though, just because the way everything's built in. Let's see what this does, just out of curiosity. Nah, that's fine. And then what happens if we take the huge chunk Content aware, just see what it does. Yeah, no thanks. All right, so I think this is probably good to go. I mean, if we if we wanted to, we could probably render it out some more, add some. Uh, we want to do like a blur, so we we'll do it just like a very soft kind of imply like uh, where the concrete meets, you know, like the seams. There we go. That's a better word. I'm just kind of fake where the seams are. Fix this lighting a bit. Down here too, and here, and down there. And then grab some of this lighter shadow, darker shadow, and then Yeah, that's looking fine. This needs to be rendered in because there's lighting down here, but there's not like a pole. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we got one, two, three, four, five. We need 
We need a round one here, but we also need some sort of lighting going into it, so or some kind of support beam, you know, this like circle-y structure going there, and then here too it needs to be curved more like that. Doesn't have to be perfect because this is kind of blurred out. It's just in the background as a way to just your brain kind of fills in the pieces. Let's grab that. Grab like that. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So then, uh, I think as far as adding anything else to the scene, we don't really need to. I mean, we have the purpose of the scene. We have the framing, we have the focal points, uh, we have the idea of the scene, and I think we're pretty much good to go. We're gonna we're gonna do auto tone and auto contrast, just to see what it does, right? Eh, auto tone is too green. Auto contrast barely does anything, but it does make it a little bit brighter, so I'm down for that. And then auto color makes it more blue. Not down for that. But if we take the highlights and bump them up a little bit, and then bring in the middle t mid tones a little bit more, it's too much. Just a little bit. Just a little. I said a little. Stop going twice. There we go. Yeah, so it just adds a little bit more contrast to the image. And then, uh, actually, what we can do for funsies is we can add uh, some like. Because this place is gross, right? There'd be dust and just crap everywhere, right? And especially with this thing flying around, it would just be a mess. So uh, we could add some dust, like god rays, you know? Uh, and then play, with, play around with that a little bit. So that would actually be going that direction. So let's do that bit and a good way to do god beams or god rays is if you do a mask and just feather out the edge a little bit maybe a little bit of contrast actually probably in this case we're going to feather out quite a bit and then just take a soft brush or any kind of brush that you have that's like a gas effect go to screen grab that highlight Put it down quite a bit. Stop it. There we go. Grab that whatever color you want kind of thing. And just kind of paint in this very rough uh, idea of a god ray coming in, right? Something like that. And we could probably widen it. And then duplicate it, make it smaller. So I went like down there, like that. And then filter it, blur, Gaussian blur. Uh, not on that one, but on the big boy. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we'll kind of just blur it out quite a bit because we don't want it to be harsh lines, you know? This is just kind of grossness that's floating through the air. Uh, this one could be like that. Merge the two, whoops. Merge them. And set it to color dodge, no. Lighter color, overlay, pin light. I think that works. I think the problem is uh, that this beam is in the way. So it's just gonna softly erase it out of there because it is blurred. So we don't want to use a hard brush. There we go. Yeah, and then it adds this kind of layer of light. And then if we duplicate it again, make it bigger, and put it like here-ish, make it super big, like there. And then, again, we're going to have to 
delete here a little bit. We don't want it so powerful. So we're just going to softly get rid of it. And then we could just maybe highlight, maybe? Yeah. Highlights a little bit. Trying to match the perspective, you know? So it'd be a bit more like that, probably. And then bring this back out. So it's a bit like that. Maybe there. Maybe down there. Actually, yeah, that's better. If we bring it to about here, about there, and then delete all of that part of it, and kind of just have this very faint beam causing dust and crap to appear. Yeah, that looks fine. Yeah, I dig it. Might me might actually adjust the saturation. Maybe. Nah. Alright, so merge then. Duplicate, merge. And then go to saturation, because right now it's colorful, but I want it to be more colorful. Not that much. Good lord. We want it to have some pop, you know? Yeah, something like that. That looks fine. And then, before and after, before we added all the effects. Yeah, it really just separates everything. It's nice. Looks cool. So we'll try auto tone, auto contrast again to see what it does now that we have these huge god rays coming in. Yeah, auto color wants to bring in blue, but I'm not a fan because this, you don't want blue in like an industrial area because it's dirty, right? So there wouldn't be too much of a blue effect, but there would be quite a bit of yellow. Maybe even some uh, green, just a smidge to help make it feel grosser. Yeah, something like that. It looks cool. Sweet. Yeah, so I think that's uh, I think I might call it there. But let's let's try something else. Let's try a. Uh, oops. Let's go ahead and crop. Get all the stuff that's not. All the giant stuff in the background needs to get out of here. Let's try, uh, let's try making it closer. I'm looking at it, like, compositionally. Maybe this needs to be bigger. It's a bit, like, there. I think that's fine. I think it's fine in the center, and then using, yeah, using everything else. Yeah, it's totally fine. We could try one last thing. I keep saying that because I'm indecisive. We could try something that adds like uh, dirt and dust flying around everywhere. So, dust clouds on the ship. And it, it would feel like the ship is pushing dust through the air that's flying around. But what do we use? Use something like like this, maybe. Something like there. Uh, lighter color. 
Ten life. Nah, it's too it's too hard. Doesn't fit the theme that we got going on here. I think if we just throw in some dust, it might it might just be the easiest way to do it. So we'll go ahead and take out all the blacks part. Uh, not contiguous. And some of that. There we go. Go ahead and darker color. Lighter color. Lighter color works. And just put it like down here somewhere. Maybe. Um... No, actually, I think it's fine. I think it's fine without it. Because all it's just going to do is add unnecessary details and just take away from the point of the image. So I think it's fine just like this. So go ahead and just filter, sharpen. I just do sharpen once because it takes everything and it kind of just puts it together, you know? You can tell the difference if I zoom in. But it's not like a huge difference. So it's just sharp enough to where you don't have to worry about it. If you do sharpen again, it starts getting really crazy. And then like that Far Cry image that I showed earlier is insane because it looks like you just sharpened it like six times. So, you know, I'll just leave it like this. Maybe, maybe add some dust variety in this God Ray here. With one of my dust brushes. It like that and there or so maybe smaller yeah I like that <laughs> looks cool yeah dig it I think uh I think that's good to go oh I, I guess I should sign it right that's always everybody's favorite part because that means you're done so we do normal, 100%. What I like to do when I sign stuff is I like to grab a color from the image instead of just doing white over everything all the time. Uh, and in this image, there's a lot of this like highlight color. So if we grab some of this tan, something like that, right? Go ahead and sign on the dotted line. So somewhere where I can freaking see it. There we go. Sign it date it, italicize it just by flattening it, it's really easy to do, and then just put it down here where nobody cares, something like that. You don't want it too big, like a like a freaking watermark on the image, but you want it big enough to where people can see it. If this is like an image that you're putting on your own personal stuff, if this is like a business, then like a company work or something, then you just, most of the time don't sign it. You'll either put a logo there if they want you to, or uh, you just don't put anything. So, but I want it there, but I don't want it to be so bright that it pulls attention to it. So it's just kind of darken it a little bit more. Like there. I think that's fine. Could even check it vertically and see what that looks like. Nah, I think that's totally cool. I think that's good to go, bro. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and post this on ArtStation, the usual rigmarole. I put ArtStation in the chat so you can go for it if you want to. Uh, and, you know, to be honest, I don't know when I'm going to be back. <laughs> because of the PlayStation 5 coming out Thursday, uh, in a total of like six games, including a new Kingdom Hearts rhythm game, which I'm wearing a Kingdom Hearts shirt because I'm so psyched about Kingdom Hearts, it's my favorite game series. Uh, it's gonna be a while, you know. I got work, I got freaking PlayStation, then Thanksgiving, then Christmas. So couldn't tell you when I'm gonna be back. But December 10th, the Cyberpunk 2077 comes out, and around the same time, Matt Payne is starting uh, some things. So you should. Uh, you should get some stuff going, even though I won't be here. But I will return at some point, <laughs> and we will rock on with some other idea that 
could end up being absolutely nothing that we start with, which is usual, right? That's the way it works. That's the way. That's the way I roll, man. It never ends up being what I start with. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, Reynaldo, and I will see you guys on the flip side.